Hello everyone. So in this class we will discuss about the brachial plexus injury. So before understanding the level of injuries we will refresh our anatomy about the brachial plexus. Brachial plexus is formed by C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 nerve roots. So C5 and C6 combine to form the superior trunk or the upper trunk. C7 forms the middle trunk. C8 and T1 forms the inferior trunk. Now the trunk divides into anterior and posterior divisions for all the trunks and the anterior division of upper trunk and the middle trunk form the lateral cord. The posterior division of upper, middle and lower trunk form the posterior cord and the anterior division of the lower or the inferior trunk form the medial cord. The middle cord mainly gives fibers to the ulnar nerve, some fibers to the median nerve. The lateral cord gives fibers to the musculocutaneous nerve and the median nerve. And the posterior cord gives fibers to the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. So the nerve injury for musculocutaneous nerve, axillary nerve, radial nerve, median nerve and ulnar nerve we have already discussed. These are distal injuries to the brachial plexus. And now we will be discussing about the injuries which are proximal to this nerve injuries that is the injury to the lateral cord or the medial cord, injury to the brachial plexus proximal to these areas. So the main causes of brachial plexus injury is the stretching or traction injury that can occur when the head and neck are forced away from the shoulder. So it is a traction of the uh, of the head and neck away from the shoulder causing stretching and injury of the brachial plexus. If severe enough the nerves can actually abulse out of the spinal cord or tear out of the roots. Some of the traumatic causes are motor vehicle accident, contact sports injury etc or any direct assault. The non-traumatic most common cause is the obstructive palsy that is during birth. It is mostly because of the shoulder dystocia where the shoulder gets stuck during birth and then the head and neck will be pulled away from the shoulder for delivery. So during this procedure the brachial plexus could be injured. Brachial plexus injury can be divided into preganglionic injury and the postganglionic injury. Preganglionic injury means the injury proximal to the dorsal root ganglion. Whereas postganglionic means it is distal to the dorsal root ganglion. So if it is a preganglionic injury, the most significant clinical feature is the Horner syndrome, where the sympathetic nervous system will be involved. Therefore, there will be drooping of eyelid, pupils getting smaller, and abnormal sweating. Whereas postganglionic could be complete or partial, where complete means all the nerve roots from C5 to T1 will be torn. Partial, if it is C5, C6 nerve root, it can be called as Erb's palsy or the injury of the upper, uh, injury of the lateral cord. C8 and T1 nerve root, if it is involved partially, it is called as Klumke's paralysis. In our examination, during sensory examination and motor examination, we can find the uh, symptoms of pain, paresthesia at the level of dermatomal level of the nerve root that has been involved. There could be weakness, heaviness or paralysis of the muscles of upper limb. We need to track the group of muscles or the muscles that is involved so that the physiotherapy rehabilitation can be planned for the patient. So this can be found out during examination, especially motor examination. Diminished pulse could also be present if it involves the vascular structures. So the characteristic feature of the Horner syndrome is ptosis that is drooping of eyelid pupils get small and constricted. There will be absence of sweating in surrounding skin and it has a very poor prognosis. Let us discuss about the obstructive brachial plexus injury or obstructive brachial plexopathy. The most common are the Erb's palsy and Klumke's paralysis. 
Injury to the brachial plexus during birth is called as obstetric brachial plexus injury. Usually a stretching injury from a difficult vaginal delivery is one of the most common cause that is shoulder dystocia. Some rare cases reported following C-sections could also be the cause. But the most common cause is the shoulder dystocia during birth. The risk factors for this brachial plexus injury are the the fetus is too large for gestational age or also called as macrosomia. Difficult presentation or the alignment of the fetus during birth could be the risk factor, shoulder dystocia, where the shoulder gets stuck during birth. Forceps delivery, bridge position and prolonged labor also could be some of the other causes. Coming to herbs palsy is the paralysis of the arm caused by injury to the upper trunk that is C5 C6 so at this level of the area so its main cause would be could be because of the stretching that is the neck is going far from the shoulder or this could be because of the extreme depression of the shoulder causing distance between the neck and the shoulder so some of the important <coughs> causes are the shoulder dystocia is the most common cause other cause can be traumatic fall on side of the head and the shoulder in adults. Gunshot injury or any kind of violence could cause injury to the upper trunk or the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. Shoulder dislocation also can cause injury to the lateral cord. Clinical presentation of the Earth's palsy is weakness of mainly biceps deltoid, brachialis and brachioradialis which are mainly supplied by the C5 C6 nerve root partially supraspinatus infraspinatus and supinator are also involved the deformity that we see in our palsy is policeman's deep hand or porter's deep hand deformity this is because of the elbow extended position and pronated forearm position arm adducted and medially rotated this is these positions are because of the loss of shoulder abduction and lateral rotation elbow flexion and supination is lost and reflexes such as biceps reflex and supinator reflex are also lost Sensi sensory involvement are mainly for dermatome c5 c6 because the nerve root involved is c5 c6 so again i would like to repeat during examination we should examine for the sensory examination of C5, C6 and motor examination of all the muscles of upper limb. Next type is the Klumke's paralysis. This is mainly because of the extreme abduction of the arm that is arm pulled away from the body in abducted position. So this will stretch the lower part of the brachial plexus that is the medial cord. The causes are any injury causing excess abduction and stretch of the shoulder. Other causes could be shoulder dystocia, holding a fall, gunshot injury, violence or shoulder dislocation. Clinical presentation. As the CAT1 nerve roots are involved, the ulnar flexor of the wrist and the fingers are involved that is supplied by C8. Extension and flexion of the fingers, which are also supplied by C8, these are weak. Intrinsic muscles of the hand, which are supplied by T1 nerve root, are weak. For example, adduction or abduction of the fingers, which are mainly caused by the dorsal introsia and palmar introsia, which are supplied by ulnar nerve. So, ulnar nerve root value C8, T1. Claw hand deformity can be seen as well as sensory loss to the T1, C8, dermatome level. Physiotherapy management for brachial plexus injury. What are the aims of physiotherapy management? The first aim is to educate caregiver in handling, positioning and daily living activities of the child which has undergone injury to improve or maintain range of motion to improve maintain muscle strength to prevent joint contracture and deformity to improve sensation and to protect the denervated dermatomes 
as the sensory loss will be present so this is important where the dermatomal label should be protected from any kind of injury or burn because the patient won't be feeling any kind of sensation to that dermatom label so it is vulnerable to injury following surgery child is placed in cowl dressing so caregiver should be educated how the child should be positioned after surgery or after the child is diagnosed with brachial plexus injury during birth so this cowl dressing will restrict movement of the arm and the neck Main surgeries done are nerve grafting and aloe grafts. Nerve transfer also can be done. After the surgery, the main important goal of the therapist is to explain to the caregiver how the child should be wrapped or how the child should be dressed. So the restricted movement of the arm and the neck will prevent further stretch to the brachial plexus. <clears throat> So for pain control, TENS has shown a positive result for maintaining range of motion. Passive movement should be given. So passive movement should be given for shoulder joint, elbow joint, wrist joint and all the joints of the hands so that the proper range of motion would be maintained and there will be prevention of joint stiffness. Splints can be used. The splint that is used for brachial plexus injury is called as aeroplane splint. So this aeroplane splint immobilizes shoulder in abduction. It prevents glenohumeral subluxation. Passive range of motion exercises should be given not only for the adult patient but also for the child if it is a obstructive brachial plexus injury. All the joints of the upper limb should be mobilized to prevent any kind of adhesion to the joints and the muscles. These are some of the positions to show you how Passive range of motion exercises can be introduced for the child. So we should perform passive range of motion with care. Re-education of the muscle and sensory stimulation can be done by stimulating techniques for example brushing, icing etc. Strengthening can be done for adults according to MMT grading where we have already discussed that if it is grade 0 or 1 we will be using muscle stimulation if it is grade 2 suspension if it is grade 2 plus we will be using active range of motion exercises active assisted if it is grade 3 plus we will be introducing resistance equipments to the patient to train but for pediatric brachial plexus injury we cannot perform resistance exercises so therefore we have to we have to encourage the child for reaching exercises that means we have to attract the child to move towards things which is attractive so this is a technique which can be acquired by the physiotherapist through regular training.